today, let's talk about super cropping, high stress and low stress training techniques to get the most out of your next crop. Stick around. We're going to go over a couple advanced tricks, a couple advanced techniques that most growers don't really know about. But before we do, today's video is brought to you by Real Growers Grow Dots, the easiest way to feed your high value plants. You mix Grow Dots in once at the beginning of your grow and they feed your plants all the way to harvest. You don't have to worry about nutrient burn or nutrient lockout. Grow Dots does all the hard work for you. Check them out over realgrowers.com. And while you're there, use coupon code SCOTTY4. 420 to get 20% off your first order. Now let's get back to the show. Come on, high C. Let's get into this one. This one's pretty cool. Okay, so this is a new term for me, super cropping. Super cropping. I think I've seen you do it before, but help me out. What is super cropping? File this one under what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Mm. Okay? Okay. Now, super cropping, we talk about stress techniques and putting our plants under stress to elicit certain responses, Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's to make them stronger, to bring out more trichomes. Uh, So this is a stress technique, and this one's rough, man. (laughs) I talk about plants being sentient. Uh-huh. I hope not, man. Uh, uh, this is literally, it's like snapping the inner the inner layer of the plant. There's a, an inner, there's the outer skin of the plant, and then inside there's this cambrium layer, and you're just breaking it. You're just uh, snapping it uh, in a variety of ways. So they call it high-stress training and low-stress training. High-stress training is just when you snap the branch. You go, you try to snap the inside and not the outer skin. Uh-huh. But... It's a stress technique, and what happens? It sends healing hormones. It sends a lot, the lion's share of the hormones, the growth hormones, the auxins. They send them right up to where that, that uh, wound needs to be repaired, and then all of a sudden it just creates this highway. There is this highway for auxins and, uh, and food and rooting, I'm sorry, and uh, growth hormones. Uh, they're used to getting up there. There's a pathway from the go there, and they just continue, and they build stronger. Okay, so it sends a signal to the plant uh-huh. to start allocating those hormones and, and all the stuff it needs to heal over yep. there. Yep. Does it take away from the rest of the plant to do that? I mean, I guess I didn't really think about that too deeply. But yeah, but there's only a certain amount of growth hormone in the plant. And what happens is normally it gets sent right up to that center cola. That's why that center cola just eclipses everything else because so so strong and dominant. Uh, so what we're trying to do is like when you top a plant, you're trying to reallocate, you're trying to uh, redistribute those growth hormones. And this is just an, another way of doing it. Cannabis communism. Whoa. All right. <laughs> all right. We want equality for every budding site. All right. <laughs> uh, you know what? I do want every budding site to thrive if I can. Okay. So overall, by doing this and, and kind of pushing those growth hormones and stuff to different parts of the plant, sure. does it result in more budding sites or just better budding sites? What's the, what's the benefit of doing this? And this also goes into training the plant and what we want the plant to look like. Uh, we've talked before about the light penetration, that if you have a light way up in the ceiling, by the time it gets down to, uh, down to the canopy, it can dissipate. It can be at 10 or 11% of, of what the light was, you know, a, a lot closer up by the ceiling. Mm-hmm. So when you, a lot of times what we'll do is it's called super cropping. It can be also called high stress training. And you're literally just bending, you're taking your giant coal that's going to be growing up towards the ceiling Mm -hmm. and you're just either bending it slowly, which is low stress training or snapping it. And that same thing is super cropping. You're trying not to snap the outside of the branch, Mm -hmm. but you kind of pinch it and snap, you know, bring it 90 degrees down and you will hear a pop inside. That's the signal that the plant needs to send these growth hormones to fix that. Uh, If you can get, if you can take your top that's growing into the light and then you can bend it down. Now what's going to happen, you're going to get tops growing all up there. Little Christmas trees are going to show up instead of it creating one giant bud like that. It's going to just grow little Christmas trees all along the, along the, uh, Giant you know, apical Murray stem, I guess. So instead of just having one main cola in the center, now yep. that same stem is yep. budding off four or five big yeah. colas. And what's going to get more light penetration? If I've got a you know a cola the size of my arm, you know up here is going to get good light penetration. Down here, maybe not so much. If I take that and turn it like that, 
It's going to get a bunch of yes. evenly distributed. That's the idea with, with training these plants is to get as much of the, as many flowering sites getting primary top quality light as possible. Okay, let's talk about a couple of other things that I've heard besides just topping and this high stress training. Sure. Uh, I recently came across a word called fimming. Fimming, man. Fimming. F. I missed. It's interesting. And this is as far as you want to take it. If you look at fimming, it looks kind of complicated. It's when you're trying to top a node and you kind of, you cut most of the node off. You just Google it. It's pretty easy to figure out. But the idea is you're leaving just enough of this little node that hopefully it, when it uh, sprouts again, it sprouts into two nodes. And then mm. from those two nodes, you're able to really shape your plant. It really is a lot of art. There's a lot of showing off on, you know, and it's fun, by the way. But on Instagram or something like that, you show a plant that looks like a candelabra and has, you know, eight tops equally distributed or ten tops yeah. distributed. Uh, that's neat and all. I don't really do all. I don't really go crazy with that. I will take and I'll just go find a node. I'll go above the node. I'll top it. And then I will just, what I'm trying to do is spread the plant out. I'm trying to keep it from one dominant top and just spread the plant out. Normally it's easy enough to just cut the top out of the plant. Mm -hmm. You've got four or five new tops there and you just nurse them along. I use bamboo stakes myself. I, I've seen pictures of the fimming and it looks kind of like Mr. Miyagi and the bonsai trees. Sure, sure. So it looks cool. It's very cool. Everybody does this for different reasons. I do it so I can have a bucket of cannabis to smoke. I use it every day. There's folks that love, uh, you know, just showing the pictures off on the internet. There's folks that are doing this as, as works of art. And I appreciate all that. I'll smoke it all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about low stress training for a minute. Sure. And... You already mentioned you kind of use bamboo stakes yep. to separate and, and get some air distribution and flow. And yep. uh, let's start with staking your plants and then let's cover a couple other low stress training. Yeah, these plants are really malleable, or at least if you're doing it right, they should be really malleable. If you're uh, trying to move branches and they're breaking off you probably want to start over again. You probably got got something wrong. These things should be able to be, because you weave them in and out of a trellis if you want, or I can take mine and uh, basically do like a 90 degree angle with them and then bend them over to a, uh, tie them to a bamboo stake with some zip ties or something like that. So these plants should be super malleable. They should be easy to uh, move around and shape. And like I said, the idea is, is you need to get really good light penetration and airflow to anything that is going to be worth smoking. So if you've got these little nodes and, and little tiny bits of plant material really, really low, cut them off. All that's going to do is rob energy. But the idea is to get the lion's share of your plant to be exposed to the maximum amount of light you know, without all that dissipation uh, and to be able to get the maximum amount of airflow. And then we want to be sending those hormones up evenly so they each get an even distribution of hormones and food. Okay, so I guess the million dollar question, yeah. I feel comfortable doing some of the low stress training stuff. Mm -hmm. I feel a little bit uncomfortable doing the high stress training stuff. And then when I think about super cropping, I immediately worry that I'm going to ruin my plants. Of these three methods, sure. do you just use all of them whenever needed or are, do you kind of shy away from the way that I would. I'll give you an example why you shouldn't be scared of super cropping. You'll do it accidentally. You will accidentally end up breaking a beautiful stem. It'll lay down. You'll be like, oh, please come back. Please come back. You'll stake it up and it'll come back stronger than ever. I'd have a big old knuckle in there and come back stronger than ever. So uh, super cropping is one of those things. Once you do it, you kind of shake your head and you go, oh, this is pretty neat. Uh, I will say I'm not, uh, I don't sit there and you know, break the stems and all that to, to redistribute the hormones. I have uh, a few plants, they're pretty big. Uh, so I go in there and I just top them. I will take the main central cola, I will top that to redistribute the, the hormones to the five or six or seven or eight 
other branches that I have there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'll expose I'll expose all those to good light. I'll end up either I don't really trellis anymore, but trellis is a great way to do it. I'll use the bamboo stakes, and then I've just got multiple tops, and they're all being get even light and even food and and hormone distribution. So you're always using low stress training. You're sometimes always. using high stress, and then occasionally you'll use some of the super cropping. Yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. Low stress training is easy. And by the way, don't be low stress training is just bending it slowly, bending it. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid to try high stress training. It's counterintuitive that it would work. Go ahead and take a you know, take the central cola. Take your biggest central cola. Take it between your fingers and just bend it over until you'll hear a snap. If you want, take a bamboo stake or something to support it so it's not just hanging down there. Make a little cast mm-hmm. and uh, come back at it. Three, four days later. And when you see what happens, zoop, right back up there. Okay, last thing. Yes, sir. Most important thing, only during veg. Only during veg. Man, these plants are so resilient. I'm not going to lie. I've definitely taken a top in, you know, the week one of flower that's growing right into the light, bent it over, and it's responded. It's okay. been okay. But if we're doing best practices, do all this in veg. Get your plants shaped right in veg. So when you go to flower, all they have to do is, is beef up. But that is just my thoughts on training plants. That's how I do it. But what about you? Do you have a cool hack? Do you know more about fimming than me? Leave it in the comments. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. Press that subscribe button. And check out the other couple videos YouTube is recommending.